Hey everyone, it's Chad Pavel, the Entrepreneur's CPA. Visit me at pinewoodct.com. Today we're going to talk about something very important, very important to the life of your business and your family, and that is picking the right entity structure and what it means to your business and to your personal finances. So we've selected two. We're going to look at the LLC and the S Corporation, which tend to be the most common for small businesses. And so let's talk about the similarities and the differences and, again, what it really means as far as your time, your your assets and liabilities. So let's just jump right into a slide deck as always. So most important is you want to separate out your business assets and liabilities from your personal assets and liabilities. Now, what might be driving you trying to form a separate legal entity is maybe you're looking for a loan or for an investor. Maybe you have multiple vendors and suppliers who are now looking for you to supply information on your company, business credit history, um, an EIN number, things of that nature. Um, so that would be a good reason, of course, to separate out and a good indication that business is getting pretty serious. Um, and so many times a third party will require you to do this, but most importantly, this will separate out your business assets and liabilities from your personal. Last thing we want to have happen is for you to get sued or have someone claim against your business assets only to find that your personal and business are one and the same. We got to separate them out. Don't want anybody taking your home. All right, so let's start with the similarities between the LLC and the S Corporation. Well, they both are separate legal entities, as you know. They have their own name, their own assets, their own bank accounts, their own liabilities, their own owners and shareholders, if you will. They both provide limited liability protection, meaning that, again, the owners are typically not responsible for the business debts and liabilities. It also gives you pass-through taxation, where the owners report and pay taxes on profits, rather than having the company pay the tax directly to the IRS as they would with a C corporation. And of course, they both have filings and state requirements and other, um, and other communications you need to file with your state. Now, as far as ownership goes, this is where things get a little bit different. The LLC can have unlimited number of members or owners, as we call them. They can be LLCs, S corporations, uh, C corporations, personal personal trusts. They can be certainly individuals here in the U.S. or overseas. There are really few restrictions on the LLCs. They're very popular for small startups. They're very popular for large international companies who need to have many subsidiaries. Typically, an LLC is very quick and easy to spin up. Compared to an S corporation, they're actually limited to 100 shareholders, and they must be U.S. citizens and residents. They cannot be other LLCs or other S corporations, C corporations, trusts, partnerships. They actually have to be individuals. So that'll tell you that if you have a one or two person owned company, you may be okay going with an S corporation. We'll see what else makes sense here. There are many, many restrictions there too. Um, and they're very popular among, again, very simple ownership structures, one, two people uh, who run a company actively. Now, as far as the formalities that are required just to maintain these companies and start them up, well, the LLC requires an operating agreement. That's literally a 5, 10, 20 page document that you and your partners and, and shareholders sit down and write out typically with a template to just to outline what is this business all about? What happens when this happens? Um, when does the business dissolve? Are we going to sell this business? And if so, what happens to all the money and everybody? Um, you'll is issue member certificates as well. They're actually not shares, their membership certificates. You do need to have an annual meeting and document all major business decisions, of course, in the minutes. And uh, you can either self-manage an LLC or you can hire managers to manage an LLC. Now, as far as the S Corporation, well, you need to adopt bylaws, which are very similar to the operating agreement in that they're just a bunch of documents, uh, a bunch of things on a document and and principles that you need to run the company by. Um, you need to hold an initial and annual director and shareholder meetings as well to keep everybody in sync and updated, maintain corporate records, issue stock to shareholders. There are directors now. There's a board of directors who don't necessarily participate in the business. Those will be the responsibilities of officers. So president, CEO, secretary is an officer on the board of directors. It can be, you know, your investors, people who just guide the major decisions and who uh, have voting power over major decisions in the business. That's really the difference between the, uh, the directors and managers. Officers run the business, essentially. 
All right, so taxes and other differences and things you should be wary of. Well, on the LLC, uh, you do pay self-employment tax on all of the income that the company generates and that's FICA taxes. So just beware of that, that that can get very high. So if you're making a couple hundred thousand dollars and it's a one member, single member owned LLC, you very well may be paying the 15.3% self-employment tax in 2018 um, on all of the income that the business generates, regardless if you paid yourself a salary or if you only distributed much less than that, you're still gonna pay the self-employment tax on an LLC. So just be very wary of that. It could be what we would call overpaying or paying too much. Um, and then that's the same thing if you take distributions or not. If you're pulling your pulling a couple grand a week out for a salary for yourself, or if you leave it all in and the business generates a nice profit and you reinvest it all into let's say inventory, you're still gonna pay taxes on all the net income. So just, just be aware of that. It's the same with most businesses. Um, ownership transfers are rather limited. They do require approval of other members if there are other ones. And of course, the dissolution date must be determined. So an LLC has a finite life. It might be 50, it might be 100 years, it might dissolve if you or a principal member or owner passes away or even leaves the country. You can all set that up in the operating agreement, but dissolution date is required. So with an S corporation, you still pay self-employment taxes, of course, but you actually... Um, you actually write out and determine a salary, a reasonable salary for you as the member to take out of the business. And that on that, you will pay your self-employment tax. Now, after that, you pay just business income tax, which is much different and lower. You don't pay that 15.3% self-employment tax on anything outside of the reasonable salary that you will take. Now, the reasonable salary is where many S corporations can kind of get into trouble because if your business typically, if your business is making a lot of money or a typical owner makes, let's say $300,000 in your business, and you're only telling the IRS that your salary is $50,000 and your business is making a lot of money, you might be getting audited to be honest. So finding that reasonable salary is very, 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 very important. So that's where you want to sit with your CPA and attorney and figure out what's a, what's a reasonable amount of money to pay myself and therefore pay the IRS on that self-employment tax. So, um, so that's the big difference though, is you actually write out and determine a salary that you're going to pay yourself compared to an LLC where you don't necessarily take a salary and you're still paying self-employment taxes on all of the money the business generates. So beware of that. You can easily transfer shares, and there's actually no dissolution date with an, uh, with an S corporation. It does exist in perpetuity, all right? So really the big question is, and these are just the main topics here, but what is the, the, the right legal entity for you? LLC, S corporation, or something else? Well, for most businesses, if you operate a local, let's say, service business, if you have a you know local business consulting or coaching practice or an online business even, most of the time an LLC or an S corporation are gonna be just fine for you. But keep in mind, you probably can't take an institutional investor in an S corporation since remember, an S corporation must be owned by an individual, not another company, LLC, trust, C corporation or S corporation. So that's what I have for you guys today. If you need help, of course, hit us a reply here on YouTube visit us at pinewoodct.com. Again, I'm Chad Pavel, the entrepreneur's CPA. Hope I helped you out today. Have a great week and happy selling.